Hey, after looking at that suit, listen, this is just an easy copycat Jupa Tuscana suit. I want you guys to come on in and take a look at these ingredients right here. We got kale, onions. Here, I'm using Italian sausage. You can use ground chicken, whatever you want to use. I like this right here because of the flavor that it comes with. Obviously, we got to have potatoes, flour, garlic. Now, this part right here is up to you. I just, that's my pinch. That's good enough for me. If you guys want to add a teaspoon, go ahead. Hey, but look out, folks. Then we got chicken stock, heavy whipping cream, and we always gonna have salt and pepper. And then I cannot not say nothing about the bacon, folks. Hey, you know what? Look, I love using my wooden, you know, my wooden spoons, right? But you see, I got the squares, and I used to do that. But listen, a few of my, you know, subscribers, people that follow me, sent me a few of these. Look, this right here makes so much of a difference. You know what, I just wanna say thank you. You guys know who you are. And if you guys uh, don't have one of these, you might as well get you one. But this right here saves you a lot of time. And it's practical, and it don't scratch, you know, your Dutch oven. Now you guys get to see just how practical it is, right? Now, you wanna get yourself a strainer. I'll be using that one. Look, you guys can put this on a paper plate, regular plate. What I'm gonna do is I wanna keep a little bit of that flavor in there, right? So just so everything can drip off, and I'm just gonna set this right here like that. Right? So let me finish getting the rest of this out, and then I'm gonna show you guys the next step. You're gonna really like that. I went ahead, turned my heat back on. You see this? Look, we want to go ahead and just start, use some kitchen shears. It'll be best to do that. Start off there. Look, we're just going to cut these. All of this down here on the bottom, all of that. Now we adding the bacon to it. I know you guys can just imagine right now, think about that flavor. You know what I mean? What we're doing is we're building layers and we're making it real nice. Now, under medium high heat, we want to render this down and cook this. Then once we get this cooked down, I want to separate all of these. Right, once we get it cooked down, then we're gonna remove these. I'm gonna just put this on top of the other port, the ground port, you know what I mean? And then I'm gonna show you the next step. Okay, so look, I just went ahead and put my top on my Dutch oven, right? So listen, we're gonna multitask. I tell you, once we start, we don't stop. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just peel my potatoes, right? I'm gonna go ahead and do it the new school way. I know you guys have seen me peel them like how my grandmama did. That's when I grabbed my petty knife, you know what I mean? And uh, I just get down like my grandmama taught me. But right now, we're gonna do these, and then let me get these done. You guys get to adjust to that, but after I get these done, then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you the next step. Super simple, and we're doing this all while our bacon is cooking. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these down, right? The key to the potatoes is, you always wanna make sure that you keep them pretty much uniform, that way they all ready at the same time. You don't want something that's gonna be hard. I'm gonna just take these, cut them down, just like this. It depends on what size bites you like. For me, you okay, look, I'll say this. You guys can dice them. That's cool, that works. You know what I mean? Uh, for me, I just like to quarter them and I get them about a half inch, maybe a little bit about five eighths. For those of my construction people out there that know that tape measure, we're talking about that thickness and then I just cube them up. You know what I mean? This right here, that's cool. I left that big, cause that right there will be about the same as this one here. As Soon as I finish with these, I'm gonna put these back in the water. Hey, before we go, let's look at this bacon. Oh my goodness, folks. You see that right there? It's almost time for me to take this out. Okay, so I want you guys to take a look at this. Listen, I took some of the bacon fat out and of course I saved my bacon, right? So look, you wanna get yourself a strainer strain in there after it cools, you know, so it doesn't just burn up everything, and then you save it. Listen, you following me, you guys, for those of you guys that do the pork, this is the way to go. Bacon grease. I drained my bacon fat, right? I drained it, I kept maybe about a tablespoon and a half, that's good right there. So look, what's gonna get all of that out? That's the diced onion. Look, it's the acid on this, and the heat and all of that, and this square edge right here that's gonna do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add that to it. Let's get this, let's get everything coated and then we wanna cook this down a little bit. You can see as I sweep across this, it doesn't really come off. But as I let this cook and this releases this acids and everything and works its way on down to become translucent, that's gonna get all of that off of the bottom. And that fine right there is what we are looking for, folks. Okay, so look, we cooking this down. I'm liking that. 
Right now, I got my mind, you know what, I'm thinking about like a burger and having some grilled onions, but I'm just gonna keep moving this around just like this. Now, I already loaded, put a couple of garlic uh, cloves inside, got my press. Oh yeah, this is it right here, folks. Now, I'll just take this and we just knock this down just like that. We're just gonna move this around, let this go. You know, give it a, a little start, only for about 30 seconds, you know? Don't worry about what you see down here on the bottom down there. I'm gonna, we're gonna get all that up. It's gonna all marinate, mix in here. And you notice I'm not using a whole lot of seasoning. You know why? Because we letting our ingredients become the seasoning. And now you wanna bring in your flour and just sprinkle that in. And remember, I like to do everything in increments. So I start off slow, just like you see. Get everything, you know, in here, get it mixed up and incorporated. And look, it cut down on them lumps too. And what we're doing is we're just cooking that flour down, you know what I mean, so that we don't have to worry about the flour. You know, we don't want to taste no flour. We want this to be just right. And don't forget, this is a copycat. So next time you guys at Olive Oil, Olive, <laughs> olive Oil, next time you guys at olive, or olive Garden, you let them know that, hey, we making that at the house just like they are too, but even better. Now, now I'm going to grab my broth, and we're going to put this in the inside right now. Now we want to bring this back up to a little simmer, right? With that flour and all of this inside, all of this goodness. Look, this is going to start to thicken up too. So we'll just keep stirring. We got it under a medium high heat and we're going to let that continue. Okay, so look, you can see we didn't come back up to like a little light boil, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and get my strainer just like we did before, you know, like we did with the bacon, right? Just get some of that water off of there. And don't forget, I probably didn't say it earlier, you always want to put your potatoes, especially when you take that skin off of it, you want to put them in the, uh, you want to put them in some type of water. Reason being, listen, they'll get brown on you. Now, it depends on how cold or hot your water is. If you guys notice, this is a perfect example. You notice now it's not boiling, it's got to come back up to temp. You know what I mean? So look, that's why we say don't overcrowd when we frying. Same principle. But here, we're going to bring it all up together anyway. And then because I'm impatient and I done made this so many times, I'm gonna go ahead and just raise my fire up. Boom, we working with high now, folks. Look, I got everything coming back up to a boil, right? So now we just put those potatoes in. The objective is to get these to be fork tender. So I'm gonna put this lid on the top. Actually, when you put the lid on here using a, uh, a Dutch oven, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit because I like to see a little bit of a simmer. That'll do it. You know, because when you put the top on there, it's gonna probably foam and do all whatever it does underneath, right? So we put this on, I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes, then we are gonna come back and check it. Okay, look, so my timer just went off, right? So let me go ahead, open this up. And again, listen, after my burn, I always break it that way, right? So we put that over there. You wanna grab yourself a fork, right? Now I just wanna see how tender this is. Let me come over here so you guys can see. Ah, oh, yeah, these are tender. You see how I just release and it just, come off. This one's not quite as heavy, but they still soft. This right here is what you want to do, because look, look, we're going to let it continue to cook. Here's my ground pork, and check it out. And we put the bacon in too, right? Now you guys should be able to see, and you know by now, you know about the flavor, you should be able to mentally, you know, just about taste it, right? For those of you guys that never had it. Then I want you to pay attention, because look, this is key, especially for my new people. You know what I mean? After we put this in here and this has just been sitting out, it's not as hot. You can see it's not doing that rolling boil, right? So this is fine right here. These are so, oh man. This is the way I like mine. I guess when you get it from, uh, when you get it from Olive Garden, it's a little bit more on the soupier side, but this right here, I don't want to say nothing to sound crazy, but this right here, this the man's version. You know what I mean? Where are all my meat, potatoes, you know, lovers at? This is it right here, folks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my heavy cream. And now it's starting to resemble, you know, the Zupa. Chili flakes, cause I'm a lightweight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just mix this. Tell me what you think, folks. It's coming together right here in front of your eyes. If this don't do it for you, look at, you can see, look, you can see the texture, look at the thickness. As I move it back and forth, this right here is right. You wanna talk about something that's done right? This is it. Now, I'm finna come with my, fresh black pepper. I would suggest for you guys to taste it and see if you want to add some. 
for me, it goes in everything that I cook with. And I'm gonna give it two generous pinches of this kosher salt too. So we'll just do like that, just like you see. Now for the kale, right? Look, I'm gonna do it right here where it's super simple for everybody. I can cut this down, but look, just take it, separate it like that, just take it, get yourself some about this big like this, and just drop it in. This is all you gotta do. And then that stem down on the bottom, obviously we don't wanna put that in there. And we're gonna cook that down and get that nice and soft. But now, for those of you guys who ever had this before, tell me if you like what you're seeing. You can see I got it in here. Look, it's starting to cook good. Look, the potatoes are soft. So as I'm you know, moving it back and forth and mixing it, they breaking up a little bit. Everybody is you know, introducing themselves to each other. Kale is talking to the pork. Pork is saying, hey, nice to meet you. Bacon said, don't forget about me. Potatoes and all of that. Hey, super easy, super simple. And when I tell you it's huge on flavor, you gotta trust me, folks. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this lid on and we're gonna let this simmer for about, I'm gonna say, uh, let's just go for about five minutes. Then we're gonna take this out, we're gonna put this in a bowl and we finna eat, folks. Okay, my timer just went off. I just turned the fire off inside of this uh, Dutch oven. You know it'll hold that heat, right? So we'll just open it up like that and look at that right there. If that don't say, you know, super Tuscany, then I don't know what will. Look at this right here, folks. Oh yeah, kale just right. I can look at it and see, I don't need to taste one, but that there, look, you can see that bacon. And for those of you guys that don't do the bacon, you know what I mean, remember I talked about giving an option for the, instead of the ground pork, we could have did ground chicken, we could have did some kind of beef, uh, whatever you want to do. You don't even have to add the bacon, but if you want it to be more true, you want to make it just like this. Hey, look, I don't want to keep over talking. I'm finna let you guys uh, check this out. We finna go ahead and put some of this in this bowl and we finna taste it. Check it out. You see that? Look, I just saved a couple of little pieces, you know, pieces of bacon to put over the top. And now I'm going to go ahead and just put a little parm over here like this. And this is the way I do mine. Hey, you guys tell me what you think about this right here. Hey, super simple. Hey, let's go ahead and get some. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit it like this. And I'm gonna get a little bit of that parm too though, you know? Gotta get some of that kale. That, let, me, let me just make sure I get a potato. Cause look, if you guys didn't know by now, I am a meat and potato guy. Now, this is a perfect example to show you how big you can do them. I could have diced these down to like about a quarter of an uh, inch, maybe about a half inch, but I like it like that size right there. All right, look, enough talking. Cheers, folks. This right here is fire. For those of you guys that have Olive Garden or in your neighborhood or you guys maybe been passing through and ate there, listen, this right here is a true copycat. This right here is fire. Hey, I actually like mine a little bit like this. When I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the texture and the thickness, folks. I really don't know how to describe it. All I can tell you is after you taste it, hit me up down in the comment section below. Now, with that being said, listen, if you're new to my channel, let me just take this time to say, hey, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and I want you guys to tell everybody out there, listen, it's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and date this video right here. I'm gonna say happy new year to everybody out there, and I'm out. Peace.